How's it going everyone? In this video we are going to talk about how useful vector notation in the Cartesian coordinate system is and how that relates to linear equations and solving linear equations. So a vector in engineering and physics it's described as a mathematical object with a magnitude and a direction. So if we imagine a ball thrown into the sky at an angle of 60 degrees from the ground and a speed of 2 meters per second, well this is a vector. Its magnitude is 2 and its direction is 60 degrees from the horizontal. Now this can also be described in Cartesian coordinates. If we imagine our x-axis and y-axis and the origin is the point from which the ball is thrown, knowing this magnitude, knowing this angle of 60 degrees, we can actually construct a right angle triangle and we know we can calculate that the base will be equal to length 1 in this case and the height will be equal to the square root of 3, which is approximately 1.7. So in our coordinate system, this point here will have coordinates 1 root 3. Its x coordinate is 1, its y coordinate is root 3. And vectors can be presented in this manner, just by showing coordinates in a Cartesian plane. From those coordinates, you can get the magnitude of the vector just by using Pythagorean theorem. Okay. The length of the hypotenuse would be the magnitude of this vector. So the square root of 1 squared plus root 3 squared, which is the square root of 1 plus 3, square root of 4, which is equal to 2. And of course that's no surprise because we knew that the hypotenuse length is 2. So you can get the magnitude of the vector in this manner, and you can also get the location of the vector as well. Through trigonometric properties you can calculate this. The point 1 root 3 is a unique point on the grid. So the direction from the origin towards that point is a unique direction. Right? So by giving coordinates on the xy plane, you get a unique magnitude and a unique direction. So you get a unique vector. Now, you might think, well, it's more intuitive to just present the vector as here's the magnitude, 2 meters per second, and here's the direction, 60 degrees from the horizontal. And sometimes that is a more useful representation. But once you get into higher dimensions, three dimensions, four dimensions, six, seven, however many dimensions you need, it becomes much more useful to use Cartesian coordinates. Okay? So if you have a three-dimensional space, right? here's your x direction, y direction, and your z direction. For a point in that space, it's not enough to just give the magnitude of the vector, whatever that magnitude is, and giving an angle from one of the axes, okay? Because things can rotate around, okay? Let's say your point is here, right? But your point can also have the exact same angle from the surface and the exact same magnitude, but be pointed in this direction, for example, right, if we rotate it, right? Or it could be pointed in this direction, right, if we rotate it, right? So you need more than one angle, right? Uh, you need the angle from the horizontal, right? And you also need the angle in this direction here, okay? That's one way to represent a point or a vector in three-dimensional space using a magnitude, the magnitude of the vector, okay, which is the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle, and some other angles, okay? There's other ways of doing it, okay? So for example, if you imagine a circular base right here. You can talk about a distance from the origin 
and a distance upward, and then an angle for where that for where that uh, triangle is based. Okay, to represent a coordinate like that. So another way of representing a point or a vector in three-dimensional space. Okay, uh, here we talked about the angle from the base up and the angle around. Another way of representing it would be if you imagine a circular base, okay, that gets smaller. So if you imagine a sphere that is centered at the origin, right, and a point right here on the sphere, right, so you have a triangle that looks like this, right, you have the magnitude of your vector, which would be the length of this line, this dark line that I'm drawing here, the bold line. And you can imagine an angle that goes like this, and you can imagine an angle that comes from the top. Okay, so many different ways of representing it. And it turns out that using Cartesian coordinates is very mathematically convenient in a lot of situations where you just have your x direction, y direction, z direction, and you have your y coordinate, your x coordinate, and your z coordinate, and you just have a box that they make, and there's your point right there, and there's your vector. The direction is not shown as directly as with angles but in three-dimensional space four five six dimensional space it's not as intuitive what the direction is from all the angles anyways and the magnitude well you can get again just using pythagorean theorem right so let's say your x value here is two and your y value here is three and your z value is four well the magnitude of this vector Right, so let me scroll down a bit. All right, so the magnitude, let's say we have a vector x and it's equal to two, three, and four. So the magnitude of x would be written like this. All right, when we have a variable that represents a vector, we draw this little arrow looking hat above it to show that it's not just a number, it's, it's a vector, it has a magnitude and a direction. And when we talk about the magnitude of the vector, then we draw these two vertical lines on one side and on the other side. Right? So the magnitude of this vector would be the square root of two squared plus three squared plus four squared. And that gives us the square root of four plus nine plus 16. And that together, so we have the square root of 13 plus 16, which is the square root of 29, and that's gonna be a, a little bit bigger than, uh, than five, right? So we can calculate exactly what it is. So 5.4 approximately. Right? So it's easy to get the magnitude and the direction, imagining it might not be as intuitive, but seeing it on a grid, being able to have that spatial imagination of how the different vectors uh, are positioned relative to each other, it's, it is much more intuitive in the Cartesian coordinate system and it makes a lot of the mathematics more convenient as well. So generally speaking if you have a vector x you can describe its coordinates as 
x1, x2, x3, and so on up to xn, where n is how many dimensions you have. If it's three-dimensional space, then you just have x1, x2, x3. If it's seven-dimensional space, then n is equal to seven, and you'll have x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, and x7. Why we don't use different letters for the coordinates, like x-coordinate, y-coordinate, z-coordinate? Well, if you have a lot of dimensions, and for some mathematical problems, for some technical problems, you could have like 26 dimensions or something, right? If you have a lot of dimensions, you don't want to run out of letters, right? So you just stick with the same letter, the same letter you use to represent the name of your vector, but you have a subscript representing which dimension are we talking about, the first dimension, the third, the fourth, the second, and so on. So the magnitude of a vector is just the square root of each coordinate squared added up. x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared and so on all the way up to xn, your very last coordinate, squared. Okay, Just like the calculation that we did right here. Right? Where we have our coordinates, every coordinate squared, add it up, square root of that, that is the magnitude of your vector. Now, that's a lot of writing. So it's more convenient to use summation notation, right? So mathematical summation notation uses the capital sigma, it's the capital Greek S, and this symbol just means add up everything that's in front. Okay, so what's in front? X, I. Why do we put an I here instead of specifying which coordinate we're talking about, which dimension we're talking about? Well, we're gonna add up all of them. We're going to start with the first one, and we're going to end with the last one. We're going to add up all of those coordinates squared, and then we're going to take the square root of the result. Okay? So that's a short form of writing that. So, for example, let's say x equals 7, 0, negative 1, 2, right? So we have four dimensions. What's the magnitude of x? Well, it's going to be equal to the square root of all those coordinates squared added up from the first one to the fourth one, right? Because we're in four-dimensional space here, right? So that's going to be x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared plus x4 squared square root of all of that. You don't have to write that second step. I'm just doing it for redundancy. Right? We're going to have 7 squared plus 0 squared plus negative 1 squared plus 2 squared. You'll notice it doesn't matter that the 1 is negative or positive because we're just talking about the magnitude, not the direction. Right? The magnitude of 1 is the same as the magnitude of negative 1. It's just the directions are opposite. Right? So we have the square root of 49 plus 1 plus 4, which is the square root of 54. And we can calculate specifically what that is. It would be about 7.5-ish, okay, 7.3 7 approximately. So 7.3 is the magnitude of this vector in four-dimensional space. Now, we can also multiply vectors. Okay, So let's take the vector we started off with. Right? We had in two-dimensional space, x was equal to 1 and root 3. What if we had a vector twice as big? 2x. Well, that's just 2 times every single coordinate. Right? So that's going to be equal to 2 and 2 times root 3, okay? which is about 1.7 times 2, so it's going to be about 3.4. Okay? And what's going on in the geometric situation? 
Well, we had our vector x that had magnitude 2, and it had coordinates 1 and root 3. Well, now, right, this is 1, this is 2, right? This was root 3, and now it's twice as high. It's 2 times root 3, okay? Right, so what happens to our direction? Well, the direction doesn't change, right? Uh, let's say we, we call this vector y, which equals to 2 times vector x, okay? Uh, so the direction of y and the direction of x is the same, but the magnitude is different. And specifically, the magnitude is twice as high because we multiplied by 2. And we can check that, right? The magnitude of vector y is equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 2 times root 3 squared, which is the square root of 4 plus 4 times 3, which is the square root of 4 plus 12, which is the square root of 16, which is equal to 4. 4 being twice as high as 2, right? Recall this is vector x and this is vector y, right? So this is multiplication by a scalar. When we multiply a vector by a scalar, right, the scalar being 2, 2 does not have a direction, it's just a magnitude. That's the scalar, that's the vector. We just multiply every one of the coordinates by that scalar. And the result is a vector which has a magnitude, in this case twice as high, right? A magnitude is a just multiplied by that scalar. The direction of the vector remains the same.